In this video, I'm going to show you some methods and uh, use of hand-operated tools to use to cut a hole in an, your airfoil skin or in an aircraft uh, structure. A lot of times you're not able to use power tools, so you have no option but to use the hand tools. The hand tools I've chosen today are the uh, nibbler, hand nibbler, and it, uh, by squeezing it in your hand like this here, this little cutter goes up and down, and you'll see as I have it through the sheet, it'll cut away at, at the sheet. The other tools we're going to be using is this, the, uh, the hand-operated shears. There's a green shear for cutting to the uh, right, and a red shear which will allow me to cut to the left. I've done a layout of uh, the hole that I want to cut onto some cardboard, light cardboard paper, and so I've uh, made this up here and you could even make this out of your piece of aluminum that you have a pattern which to follow. You see I've placed a center line down the, the center of this uh, little door cutout. And I have a center line located on my airfoil skin which I laid on top and then I traced it around with the uh, red uh, crayon permanent felt marker onto the actual skin itself. It's a really good idea not to uh, to try and cut through masking tape or any other protective type tape, but to surround the area like a surgeon working on uh, someone's body with uh, skin protection. In this case here, I've chosen masking tape, uh, a combination of one inch and two inch masking tape to provide skin protection. I've also drawn little uh, X's on the uh, points at which I will be starting pilot drilling to make the holes uh, large enough to work with my tools, my hand tools. If you were out uh, in the bush somewhere, you could use a battery powered drill to do this operation. If you have access to air like we do here at SAIT, we'll use a pneumatic drill. In this case here, a 3 seconds inch drill uh, serves as a pilot. Place it on the uh, skin. And I'll drill through at several locations. The accuracy of this doesn't have to be real accurate. It's just a matter of getting some holes to start with. So there, I've got some initial pilot holes uh, located within the bounds of the skin cutout area. I'm going to switch drills here to a uni bit. The uni bit is another uh, method that I could use to make a nice round skin cutout if I had the uh, correct size uni bit. This one goes from a quarter inch up to three quarter inch. And uh, the size of hole I will need for my nibbler can easily be determined by grabbing a hole gauge and going along and sticking it through until you see it, it won't fit into 7 16 so I'll need at least a half inch diameter hole to be able to use this tool. So I'm going to start off by drilling a at least a half inch diameter hole. And one spot there and another spot over here. So I've got two holes which are at least a half inch in diameter. Uh, if my thing fits through, then I know you've got the hole big enough. So the nibbler is going to go through the, the hole and uh, slide it forward in the direction you can see that I have my hand here, and then just squeeze it and pull it forward and squeeze it. And if I pull it out and take a look at this time, you'll see it's cutting wee little chunks of aluminum bit by bit, kind of biting its way through, kind of like a Pac-Man type action you remember the, those games and it is sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling because it's a shearing action and a little bit of force and there I have I've cut between those two holes removed all that material now you've also noticed that I've stayed a fair distance away from the edge my mark because uh, it's, it's doing some scratching and some distortion 
and I don't want to have that on my aircraft skin, so I start off fairly far back. So nibbling around the uh, perimeter of the uh, cutout, whatever shape it is, is a viable way to cut a hole into the aircraft structure. Obviously another way, I'm going to cut another hole here with uh, the uni bit, and this time I'm going to go to the top side over here. And as you see, I've used the uni bit and I've gotten very close to the line. If I take away the ink from the, uh, from the line, that means that I've got a clearance on the pattern that I have. So that's what I want. I want to have a clearance of 20 to 40 thousandths of an inch around the uh, piece that I have. So I can take up to the ink at this point and not, not worry about doing any harm. So go one more size. So now I've got to cut from uh, this hole to that hole. In this case here, I'm going to use the uh, red shears or the green shears, hand shears, to, uh, to cut the material. Once again, you'll want to start, stay a fair far distance away and just in the cutting operation. If it gets a little bit hard, start back in the second area and cut over the strip. Once you make it to the second hole, you'll see this one here, the red one did want to cut to the left. That had an easier time going to the left than to the right, so that's why you call it a left hand cut. So I'm going to switch colors to the, uh, the green one now and do a right hand cut. See I stayed a fair distance away from the line, which is good, and you can see there's a fair bit of distortion there. And so I'm going to come a little closer, about half that distance, take a, as little hunk of material, little strip of material as possible. If, it gets too, uh, if you try and take too much, it causes more distortion to the aluminum, so you want to take a little bit at a time. So I'm going to start back here again. Now I'm going to cut very close to the red line, almost right on the edge of the red line. And there you have it. I've got a fair bit of filing to do over here and uh, very little filing to do over here. And so that would have to be then finished off with a, a hand file right down to the line or halfway through the line uh, to get it as accurate as you can. But for now we're just going to leave it as, as a cutout. Uh, I'm going to continue on drilling the last two holes. <laughs> Obviously if, the, if this was on an aircraft it wouldn't uh, distort quite so much. But Stop every once in a while and check, see how close you're coming to the line. I'm just about touching the line there, so that's where I want to stop. I'll come over this side. I'll cut that one right on the line. Uh, minimizes my time spent filing. So I'm going to con continue to cut this with the uh, shears. I'll cut this area here first to that hole. Switch to the red shears. So you can see for long stretches, the shears work, uh, work very good. For the short areas where it's tight to get in, I can work my nibblers. right up to the line. Just hand nibbling it right up to the line. Just moving the nibbler back and forth and nibbling away the, uh, the sheet. Stopping and checking as I go along that I don't get beyond the line. To that point there and I could just carry on that whole process. And of course I'd have to use a half round file to finish off my radiuses and the flat file allows me to bring it right to the uh, red line. So just continue that filing process all the way around the skin cutout, bringing it to the line accurately, and uh, that'll give you a real nice, accurate skin cutout.